Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all to another session of RBI 247, wherein we discuss finance current affairs which are relevant for RBI and SEBI grade A exam. Let's get on with today's video. The first topic that we're going to discuss today is about payment infrastructure and development fund, a very important topic, especially from exam perspective. The second one, framework for REITs and in which we'll understand what are these REITs and in which to issue depository receipts. This framework is proposed by SEBI. Then the third one is RBI statement on Indian banking uh, health, right? Health of the Indian banking sector. Okay. So the first one is about payment infrastructure and development fund. We all know that the government is moving towards cashless economy. Just ki wajah se, digital payment services ke liye bohat sare products introduce ho rahe. And it is very important to promote digital payment system in India. That is why a scheme was brought out by RBI in June 2020. This is actually a fund, a fund banaya gaya hai by the RBI. The name of this is Payment Infrastructure Development Fund. Name se hi samaj ja hai what is the purpose of this fund. Two, Okay, so Payment Infrastructure Development Fund, this was introduced by RBI. Why? Taki payment system ko aur zyada develop kara jaye in India, right? So this was introduced by the RBI, jiska initial corpus tha 345 crores. Okay, so let's see what was the purpose of this. RBI introduced the operationalization of this fund, Payment Infrastructure Development Fund in June 2020. What was the objective to develop payment acceptance infrastructure in India, especially in tier 3 to tier 6 cities? Okay, this was the aim initially tier 3 to tier 6 cities may payment acceptance infrastructure for develop Karajai. And a special focus was also given to northeast states. Going further, is may Jammu Kashmir ki UT bhi add ho gai thi and Ladakh ki Union Territory bhi add ho gai thi in the objective itself. Okay. The fund will be operated for three years. Initially, three years ke liye aega, but it could be extended to two more years. So, from this date, from 1st January 2021, the fund was supposed to be effective for three years initially, but could be extended to two more years. Now, ab is fund ko manage one karega. Ab ek fund bana hai. So, who is going to manage that fund? We have learned what is the objective. Payment acceptance infrastructure ko develop karna. But, ab is fund ki management kon karega? So, an advisory council was formed under the chairmanship of deputy governor of RBI. So, under the chairmanship of deputy governor of RBI, an advisory council was formed, which will manage this fund. Management samajli, objective samajliya. Let's see what was the initial corpus of this fund. Like I said, 345 crore ka initial corpus tha. Jisme RBI ki contribution was supposed to be 250 crore. Then, also major contribution hone wali thi card networks ki. So the major authorized card network were supposed to contribute 95 crore. That is why 250 and 95, 345 crore ka inka wo tha. And going further, ye uh, 100 crore ka, uh, 100 crore jo se, wo major, uh, major card networks se aane wale the, authorized card networks. This will be then 350 crore. Now this fund, uh, why is this scheme in news? Because this fund ki update aai hai by the RBI as per December 31st, 2022. So RBI ne fund ki puri statement nikali hai. What is the now the corpus of this fund? We'll see it in another minute or two. So initial corpus jo tha 345 crore ka tha, wherein the contribution was made by RBI and also the card networks. But is ke ilawa, ek annual contribution bhi hona chahiye from these card networks. So these card networks and card issuing banks. So card networks like Visa, Rupay and card issuing bank, for example, Kotak Bank. Okay, Canada. So uh, an annual contribution from both of these, the card networks and card issuing banks was also supposed to be done in this Fund. Okay. Now, this fund ka focus kya hoga? This fund will target the merchants who are not yet terminalized. Which means, jo aise merchants hai, jinnohne abhi tak payment acceptance devices nahi incorporate kare hai. So, those merchants who have not yet incorporated the payment accepted devices, acceptance devices. Okay. What is the use? Where will this fund be used? To subsidize banks and non-banks for deploying payment infrastructure. So point of sale devices, if a bank, 
नॉन बैंक और एनी यूजर जो पॉइंट ऑफ सेल डिवाइसेस को इनकॉर्पोरेट करेगा द फंड विल सब्सिडाइज दिस सो द यूज ऑफ दिस फंड वॉज टू सब्सिडाइज बैंक एंड नॉन बैंक फॉर डिप्लॉइंग पेमेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ओके एंड कुछ टारगेट्स दिए गए थे फॉर डिप्लॉइंग दिस पेमेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड पीओ एस मशीन देन एडवाइजरी काउंसिल okay so this advisory council will devise a transparent mechanism like i said the advisory council is responsible for managing the fund the advisory council will devise a transparent mechanism for allocation of targets to so, jo targets diye jayenge uh, to these banks for incorporation of payment infrastructure this will be done by a transparent mechanism which will be introduced by the advisory council okay so the advisory council will devise a transparent mechanism for allocation of targets to the banks and non banks in different segments and locations jo target diye gaye hain this was on the basis of various locations like i said tier 3 to tier 6 cities mein focus tha north east states mein focus tha and then it was further included uh, the union territory of jammu kashmir and ladakh were introduced so location wise targets diye gaye the for uh, this payment infrastructure the implementation of targets will be monitor ab isko monitor kon karega RBI, along with the assistance of IBA, Indian Banks Association, and Payment Council of India. So these three will uh, monitor the targets, or unko implement kiya ja raha hai ya nahi. The implementation of targets will be monitored by RBI, IBA, and Payment Council of India. Hamara question ye banta hai ki how important is this scheme? The answer is very very important. Firstly, because ye scheme RBI ki hai. Then it was introduced in previous year 2020 ke baad institute. Uh, इट्स वॉज इनकॉर्पोरेटेड एंड अभी तक आर बी आई ने ये इसका कोई भी क्वेश्चन नहीं पूछा है आर बी आई हैजेंट आस्ट एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द स्कीम बट आर बी आई पुरानी स्कीम से भी क्वेश्चन पूछती है दैट इज वाई ये स्कीम कभी भी आ सकती है इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू ओके अब जो ये इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर की बात हो रही है वॉट आर दीज पेमेंट एक्सेप्टेड डिवाइसेज एक्सेप्टेंस डिवाइसेज सो दीज मल्टीपल पेमेंट एक्सेप्ट since devices and infrastructure supporting the underlying card payments why the government is promoting the cashless economy so card payments ke liye jo infrastructure payment service ke liye jo infrastructure banega this are included in this fund for example physical pos point of sale to jo ye card swiping machines hoti hai in uh, when you purchase any good or service ya jo aap uh, service incur karte hain so this physical and digital this is also mobile point of sale uh, device जिसमें मोबाइल को ही एज अ पॉइंट ऑफ सेल यूज करा जाता है पॉइंट ऑफ सेल डिवाइस और मैकेनिज्म ठीक है देन देर इज फिजिकल पॉइंट ऑफ सेल डिवाइस व्हिच इज अ कार्ड स्वाइपिंग मशीन एंड वीपीओएस दैट इज वर्चुअल फॉर एग्जांपल क्यूआर बेस्ड तो यही सब इंक्लूडेड है फिजिकल पॉइंट ऑफ सेल मोबाइल पॉइंट ऑफ सेल जनरल पैकेट रेडियो सर्विस एंड द क्यूआर बेस्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम ठीक है इन सब में ऑल दीज आर इंक्लूडेड ओके so the subsidy shall not be claimed by the applicant okay so if any applicant is already availing subsidies under this fund under this fund if an applicant is availing subsidy they cannot avail any subsidy uh, from any other source like nabard or agar kisi aur uh, scheme ke under bhi subsidy le rahe hai for this payment infrastructure development then also they cannot avail the subsidy under this fund okay रेकरिंग कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन लाइक आई सेट एक एनुअल रेकरिंग कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन होगा फ्रॉम कार्ड नेटवर्क एंड कार्ड इशुइंग बैंक अब ये कैसे होगा जो कार्ड नेटवर्क होंगे एंड जो कार्ड इशुइंग बैंक होंगे दे विल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू द फंड आई रिपीट दे विल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू द फंड ऑन वॉट बेसिस टर्न ओवर बेसिस वन बेसिस पॉइंट फॉर विच इज जीरो पॉइंट वन पैसा इन रुपी पर रुपी जीरो पॉइंट वन पैसा पर रुपी फॉर एवरी ट्रांजेक्शन राइट ट्रांजेक्शन बेसिस विच इज टर्न ओवर बेसिस तो जो भी ट्रांजेक्शन हो रही है एक रुपए में जीरो पॉइंट जीरो या पॉइंट जीरो वन पैसे का कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन करेंगे टूवर्ड्स द फंड दिस इज फॉर कार्ड नेटवर्क देन कम्स कार्ड इशुइंग बैंक इनका टर्न ओवर इज बिटवीन वन बेसिस पॉइंट टू बेसिस पॉइंट राइट द सेम फॉर्मूला की पॉइंट जीरो वन पैसा टू पॉइंट जीरो टू पैसा इन एवरी रुपी इनका कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन होगा ओके देन ओके लाइक आई सेट कि टीयर थ्री टू टीयर सिक्स सिटीज में इनका फोकस रहेगा एंड टारगेट्स वर गिवन फॉर पेमेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट सो ये जो टारगेट्स थे टीयर वन टू टीयर फोर सेंटर्स में 
30% परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल शेयर वॉज सपोज टू बी डन टीयर फाइव टू टीयर सिक्स का टारगेट था सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल शेयर सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल हंड्रेड अगर हमारा टारगेट है ऑफ पेमेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर जो भी बनेंगे उनका थर्टी परसेंट विल गो टू टीयर वन टू टीयर फोर स्टेट्स सिक्सटी परसेंट टू टीयर फाइव टीयर सिक्स स्टेट्स एंड नॉर्थ ईस्ट स्टेट्स एंड यूटीज ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर एंड लद्दाख में रेस्ट टेन परसेंट दिस वॉज द टारगेट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड जो अब सब्सिडी मिलेगी दिस सब्सिडी विल बी ऑन क्वार्टरली बेसिस दिस सब्सिडी विल बी ऑन क्वार्टरली बेसिस एंड दिस सब्सिडी विल बी ऑन री एम्बर्समेंट बेसिस ओके वो अभी बाद में पढ़ेंगे लेट्स सी जो सब्सिडी है ये कैसे मिल रही है सो फर्स्टली इनिशियली जो है सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ सब्सिडी आपको मिलेगी आफ्टर यू डन द पेमेंट आफ्टर यू डन द पेमेंट टू द वेंडर ठीक है फॉर एग्जाम्पल आप एक पॉइंट ऑफ सेल मकानिज्म डिप्लॉय कर रहे हैं राइट यू आर डिप्लॉइंग कार्ड स्वाइपिंग मशीन एंड यू मेड अ पेमेंट टू द वेंडर उस जब आपने पेमेंट कर दी देन दैट पेमेंट विल बी री इम्बर्स टू यू दिस विल बी डन ऑन क्वार्टरली बेसिस एंड इनिशियली सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट विल बी गिवन देन लेटर ऑन ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट बैलेंस आपको मिलेगा विच विल बी आफ्टर इंश्योरिंग आफ्टर दिस फंड इंश्योर की परफॉर्मेंस कुछ परफॉर्मेंस पैरामीटर्स अचीव हुए हैं या नहीं फॉर एग्जाम्पल मिनिमम यूसेज हो रहा है या नहीं एंड वॉट इज द एक्टिव स्टेटस वॉट इज द एक्टिव स्टेटस ऑफ दीज इन एक्सेप्टेंस डिवाइसेज तो ये जो डिवाइसेज आपने डिप्लॉय करे हैं आर दीज इवन एक्टिव और नॉट एंड ऑल्सो जो मिनिमम यूसेज इनका जो है वो हो रहा है या नहीं नो वॉट इज दिस एक्टिव स्टेटस एंड वॉट इज दिस मिनिमम यूसेज सो द मिनिमम यूसेज इज फिफ्टी ट्रांजेक्शन ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ नाइनटी डेज दिस इज द मिनिमम यूसेज फिफ्टी ट्रांजेक्शन फॉर अ पीरियड ऑफ नाइनटी डेज अगर ये हो रहा है देन ये पैरामीटर हो रहा है फॉलो द मिनिमम यूसेज पैरामीटर इज बिंग फॉलोड देन टॉकिंग अबाउट द एक्टिव स्टेटस द एक्टिव स्टेटस शुड बी मिनिमम यूसेज अगर टेन डेज का हो रहा है ओवर अ नाइनटी डे पीरियड अगेन तब भी एक्टिव स्टेटस उनको डिप्लॉय जो एक्सेप्टेंस डिवाइसेज हैं दे आर परफॉर्मिंग दिस क्राइटेरिया ऑफ एक्टिव स्टेटस कमिंग अंडर दिस क्राइटेरिया ओके सो आफ्टर ये पैरामीटर्स जो है ये अचीव हो रहे हैं दीज परफॉर्मेंस पैरामीटर्स आर अचीव बाय दिस एक्सेप्टेंस डिवाइसेज उसके बाद बैलेंस ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट आपको मिल जाएगा जिसके अंदर दो चीजें हैं वी एव स्टडीड द मिनिमम यूसेज क्राइटेरिया एंड एक्टिव स्टेटस क्राइटेरिया ओके टॉकिंग अबाउट द क्लेम्स लाइक आई सेड ये री इम्बर्समेंट बेसिस पे है सो वंस यू हैव मेड द पेमेंट टू द वेंडर फॉर डिप्लॉइंग पीओएस सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल आपने एक पॉइंट ऑफ सेल डिवाइस डिप्लॉय करा है एंड यू हैव मेड अ पेमेंट टू द वेंडर फॉर डिप्लॉइंग दिस पीओएस डिवाइस ओके सो लेट्स से अब बैंक ने कहीं पे जाके रिटेल स्टोर पे ये डिवाइस uh, डिप्लॉय uh, करा है देन यू मेड अ पेमेंट टू द वेंडर वो पेमेंट आपको री हो जाएगी सो दिस इज डन ऑन री इम्बर्समेंट बेसिस नाउ इसकी एलिजिबिलिटी के लिए भी कुछ क्राइटेरिया है द मैक्सिमम कॉस्ट ऑफ फिजिकल एक्सेप्टेंस डिवाइसेस तो दो तरीके के डिवाइसेस जो है डिप्लॉय हो सकते हैं फिजिकल एंड डिजिटल फिजिकल के लिए द क्राइटेरिया इज मैक्सिमम कॉस्ट ऑफ टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज देन यू आर एलिजिबल एंड डिजिटल एक्सेप्टेंस डिवाइसेस के लिए इट इज रुपीज थ्री हंड्रेड ओके देन सब्सिडी कैसे मिलेगी इफ योर डिवाइसेस आर लोकेटेड इन टीयर वन टू टीयर फोर सेंटर्स यू विल रिसीव सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल कॉस्ट जो भी आपकी टोटल कॉस्ट है उसका सिक्सटी परसेंट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सब्सिडी यू विल गेट एंड डिजिटल पेमेंट के लिए सो दिस इज ऑल्सो डिवाइडेड बिटवीन फिजिकल पेमेंट एक्सेप्टेंस डिवाइसेस एंड डिजिटल पेमेंट एक्सेप्टेंस डिवाइसेस so 60% of the total cost you will receive in case it is a physical payment acceptance device and in if it is in tier 1 to tier 4 centers and digital payments ke liye it is 75% in tier 1 to tier 4 centers similarly tier 5 tier 6 centers and north east states and uts of jammu kashmir and ladakh this is the criteria 75% and 90% 75 for physical payment acceptance device and 90% for digital payment acceptance device Then talking about target achieve. अगर आपने target achieve कर लिया है why is this cross? Because this is initially ये uh, target RBI ने decide करा था If you achieve the target of सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट सेवेंटी फाइव टू वन ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट तो आपको इतनी सब्सिडी के लिए आप एलिजिबल हो गए बट नाउ इट इज रिवाइज दैट इज वाई दीज आर क्रॉस दिस इज डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम आर बी आई वेबसाइट इफ यू अचीव वन ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द टारगेट देन यू आर एलिजिबल फॉर वन टेन परसेंट सब्सिडी receiving yes uh, subsidy okay like i said isme annual contributions hote hain from card networks card issuing banks to ab ye corpus kitna hai 
as of December 31, 2022, the corpus is 788.20 crore. This is an important amount, especially for your exam. Ye puri ke puri scheme hi is very important for your exam, but this amount is especially very important. Just me Reserve Bank RBI ka contribution is 250 crore. Card networks ka is 302 and card issuing banks ka 483, 438. Sponsors bank ka bhi kuch hai, but subsidy payout jo hai, wo decrease kari gai hai. The total corpus comes out to be 788 crore. This amount is very important. Iski aapko detail mein jane ki koi zarurat nahi. Okay, so this was about the scheme, a very important scheme we've discussed today, Payment Infrastructure Development Fund. Talking about the second news, this is about REITs and INVITs. Now, SEBI has proposed, remember this is just a proposal, not yet implemented. SEBI has proposed that a framework will be brought out for REITs and INVITs wherein they can issue depository receipts. Now, three terms we have to understand what are REITs, what are INVITs and what are depository receipts. Let's start with depository receipts or let's, yes, let's start with depository receipts. Okay, so what is uh, There is an Indian company who wants to get funds from overseas investors. Kuch investors, overseas investors hai. Indian company wants to, wants to raise funds from overseas investors. So just shares issue kare hai. It cannot currently, it cannot directly sell to overseas investors. This can be done through a depository receipt. This can be done through a depository receipt. How? So an Indian company, they issues share, but they want money or they want funds from overseas investors or they want share issues. Karna hai. This cannot be done directly. This can be done indirectly. How? There is a role of overseas depository bank. So what happens is, the Indian company shares issue, karti hai, they deposit these shares or give these shares to an overseas depository bank. Then this bank, on the basis of these shares or bonds, in shares ko basis bana ke, ek underlying security bana ke, they issue DR, depository receipts. They issue depository receipts in their market, in their overseas market and sell these depository receipts to investors. Ab investors ke paas kya aya? Depository receipts. Jiska underlying security hai, the shares of this company. Okay, on the basis of shares of these companies, so these shares are given to this uh, depository bank, overseas depository bank, who will issue depository receipts and sell it to investors. Now, these investors can trade uh, these depository receipts in their stock exchange, but now it's not indirectly, it's not directly. This bank, ne shares, uh, this company has share issues. Kare. For example, Indian company ne share issues kare, but they want funding from in dollars from uh, investors that are there in a foreign stock exchange. What they want is ki overseas depository receipts uh, issue kare. This bank will issue depository receipts on behalf of this company. Now, ab, what is the role of this depository custodian? So, ye depository bank kya karta hai? Apne behalf pe, they have inter, uh, they have set up or they have yeah they have set up a depository custodian a depository custodian bitha diya hai in the indian market which will what they do will they will get the shares and inform or acknowledge give an acknowledgement to this depository participant or depository bank ki yes we have received uh, the shares from this company now you can issue depository receipt so ye jo custodian hai this is a custodian of this depository bank working like an agent for this depository bank, overseas depository bank. So, ye, they work like an agent. These custodians, they work like an agent for this depository bank, overseas depository bank. I hope this whole concept of depository receipt aapko samaj aa gaya hai. Let's understand. Let's read about them. A depository receipt is a negotiable financial instrument issued by a company in a foreign jurisdiction. So, ye, this is a negotiable financial instrument issued by a company in a foreign jurisdiction. They represent certain securities. Like I said, underlying securities hoti hai isme. For example, bonds, shares, etc. The DR is an important mechanism for raising funds by tapping foreign investors who otherwise may not be able to invest in the domestic market. Depending upon the location in which these DRs are issued, they are known as American Depository Receipt, Indian Depository Receipt or Global Depository Receipt. Okay? Let's understand what REITs or INVITs are. So, these are nothing but they work like mutual funds. 
तो म्यूचुअल फंड्स में क्या होता है इन्वेस्टर्स का मनी पूल करा जाता है एंड दे इन्वेस्ट इन सर्टन सिक्योरिटी सर्टन टाइप ऑफ सिक्योरिटीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल डेट में इन्वेस्ट कर दिया और इक्विटी में इन्वेस्ट कर दिया दैट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ म्यूचुअल फंड वॉट हैपन इन रीट्स एंड इनविट दे वर्क जस्ट लाइक म्यूचुअल फंड काइंड ऑफ म्यूचुअल फंड ओनली बट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रस्ट ये नाम से ही समझ आ रहा है दीज विल इन्वेस्ट इन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर uh and institutions so they work for infra infrastructure project they invest in infrastructure projects and reits when we talk about reits real estate investment trust they can either own or operate a uh, real estate right or invest in real estate their main focus is investing in real estate market but they can also operate the uh, or invest in रियल एस्टेट राइट तो ये ऑपरेट भी कर सकते हैं ओन भी कर सकते हैं जिसकी वजह से दे कैन जेनरेट इनकम ओके सो दीज आर इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रस्ट लाइक म्यूचुअल फंड दैट ओन एंड ऑपरेट रियल एस्टेट प्रॉपर्टीज जेनरेटिंग रेगुलर इनकम तो ये प्रॉपर्टीज भी दे फर्दर फाइनेंसिंग करा सकते हैं या लीज पे दे सकते हैं ये प्रॉपर्टी को जिसकी वजह से उनको रेगुलर इनकम आएगी एंड ऑल्सो कैपिटल अप्रिसिएशन ऑन देयर इन्वेस्टमेंट सो दिस इज हाउ रियल एस्टेट इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रस्ट वर्क दीज आर रीट्स Similarly, infrastructure investment trust is like a mutual fund, which enables direct investment of small amounts of money from plausible investors or institutional infrastructure, institutional investors in infrastructure to earn small portion of return on their income. Okay, so ये infrastructure में invest करते हैं and ये real estate sector में invest करते हैं. Okay. So now अब Sebi ने क्या करा है? Sebi proposed that REITs and INVITs will now be eligible. to will now be eligible to issue permissible securities for the issue of depository receipts so like i said jo depository receipts hoti hai there is an underlying security for that ek security rakhni padti hai jiske behalf pe ab further depository receipts issue karta hai so uh, now reits and invits can also do that why so that foreign investors bhi involve ho sake in investments pe if uh, Yes, and how can they do it? कुछ condition है if their directors या जो trust है या जो selling unit holders है अब ये जो mutual funds होते हैं they sell units. ये investors के money को pool करते हैं and they sell units. Further, they sell units. These units can be traded on stock exchange, right? पहले तो stock exchange में registered होते हैं and then इनकी secondary market में trading हो सकती है these units की So these mutual funds they create units from uh, the pool of money that they have received from investors and in units ko uh, they can uh, the unit holders jinhone bhi invest kara hota hai these unit holders they sell uh, or yeah they can trade in the secondary market these units are registered in the stock exchange recognized stock exchange okay so the uh, jo unit holders hai jinke paas is mutual funds ke units hai these are not barred From accessing the capital market by SEBI, SEBI ने इनको बार नहीं करा है. From making trade on these uh, units, mutual fund units. Okay, so this, which means they should not be a willful defaulter. Who? The trust, the directors, and unit holders. They should not be a willful defaulter or a fugitive economic offender. So what has SEBI decided now? कि under this proposal. So this is just the proposal. SEBI is thinking about this proposal. Why? What? That REITs and INVITs can now issue depository receipts. okay uh, the reits and invits should file a copy of these uh, initial document jo bhi inka initial document hoga for these drs depository receipt jo issue hogi to the sebi and also uh, indian stock exchange mein initial documents these reits and invits ko dene padenge so the reits and invits should file a copy of their initial document for drs issued on the back of permissible securities with sebi and the recognized indian stock exchange another information about reits and invits they are set up as business trust and hold and operate revenue generating real estate or infrastructure assets in case of invits it is infrastructure assets in case of reits it is real estate real estate sector real estate properties respectively reits and invits raise funds by issuing units like i said mutual funds kya karte hain units issue karte hain uh, to the public at large REITs and INVITs do not have multiple scheme or class of units. They have certain standards class of uh, units, just me trading. होती है. These units are denominated in Indian rupees currently, and units are also required to be listed on a recognized stock exchange. Okay, so 
ये हमने पूरा समझ लिया द सेकेंड पीस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन इज वेल नाउ द थर्ड न्यूज This is not really a big news, especially not relevant for our exams. So, हमारे exam के लिए बहुत ज़्यादा relevant नहीं है. So, we all know what is happening. There is only one uh, major business conglomerate who is in news or in limelight very recently. That is Adani Enterprises, right? So, they have been in news, especially since last one two weeks after the Hindenburg report. So, because of that, a lot of investors, a lot of stakeholders, and even banks, and also um, even the opposition party, they have said that the banks' ka exposure hai in this business conglomerate, in the Adani Enterprises, wo hume batao. And there, there is supposed to be a committee, jo ki bethe towards this, right? So, this is the demand of uh, all the stakeholders. So, for that, RBI. Wanted a statement. सबसे पहले तो RBI wanted की banks का कितना exposure है. So the RBI asked all the banks to uh, give a detail, give details on exposures of banks की this business conglomerate में कितना ज़्यादा exposures है banks का. So for that RBI has released a statement. So in this statement RBI has talked about the health of Indian uh, banking sector. This is not important for our exam. But why are we discussing this? Firstly, just for general information. Secondly, अगर इंटरव्यू में आपसे पूछा जाए वॉट हैज बिन आर बी आई स्टैंड ऑन दिस और वॉज देर एनी स्टेटमेंट रिलीज बाई आर बी आई ऑन दिस इशू क्योंकि ये इशू बहुत ज्यादा लाइन लाइट में है फॉर ऑब्जेक्टिव डिस्क्रिप्टिव एग्जाम्स ये इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है देर विल नॉट बी अ डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन इन दिस फ्रॉम दिस तो हमें सिर्फ इतना समझना है कि क्या आर बी आई की स्टेटमेंट थी आर बी आई हैज सेट आर बी आई ने सबसे पहले तो ये बताया है देर हैवीन मीडिया रिपोर्ट एक्सप्रेसिंग कंसर्न ऑन दिस about exposure of indian banks on this base uh, business conglomerate and then rbi said ki because we are uh, regulator and supervisor of uh, the banking sector that is why we have to get information on the exposure and rbi has said that the indian exposure is not very much and they are still very healthy the banking sector uh, is very healthy and Uh, there is not a lot of exposure towards this business conglomerate. इसमें एक और चीज की बात हुई गई है सी आर आई एल सी विच इज सेंट्रल रिपोजिटरी फॉर इंफॉर्मेशन ऑन लार्ज क्रेडिटर्स दिस इज नथिंग बट अ रिपोजिटरी सॉर्ट ऑफ अ डेटा बेस ऑफ लार्ज क्रेडिटर्स तो इंडिया में जितने लार्ज क्रेडिटर्स हैं जिनका एक्सपोजर इज मोर देन फाइव करोड़ जिनकी बोरोइंग एग्रीगेट बोरोइंग इज मोर देन फाइव करोड़ बैंक को उनकी क्रेडिट इंफॉर्मेशन देनी होती है टू दिस रिपोजिटरी right so this is just a repository of information of all the large creditors what are these large creditors jinka jo exposure hai in the in uh, yeah jinki borrowings is more than 5 crore their aggregate borrowing so ba what banks have to do banks have to give credit information of these large borrowers in the crilc okay so this is our app you can download our app for any information regarding rbi and sebi exam Okay, let's get on with the first question today. Which of the following is our feature of the which of the following features of PDI scheme is our incorrect? The scheme aims to subsidize banks and non-banks for deploying payment infrastructure. That's correct. The contribution of this fund is done by RBI of two fifty crore along with the government, which contributes hundred crore. No, this is by card issuing banks and yeah, card issuing networks, card issuing banks and card issuing networks, not by the government. The fund will be monitored by RBI along with IBA and Payment Council of India. This is correct. Okay, which of the following features of PIDF scheme is are incorrect? Under the scheme, banks and card providers can avail subsidy from other organization as well, like SEBI, NABARD, etc. This is wrong. So, if anybody uh, is receiving uh, subsidy under the scheme, they cannot receive any subsidy. From any other organizations like NABARD or SEBI, or not even in, from any other scheme as well. Okay, the PIDF scheme, uh, shall also receive annual contribution from card networks and card issuing banks. That is true. Under the scheme, subsidy is provided on yearly basis. No, it is done on quarterly basis. Which of the following is the features of REITs and INVITs? REITs and INVITs work like mutual funds. INVITs. Own and operate real estate properties, generating regular income and capital appreciation in their investments. No, this is REITs. These are regulated by NSC. No, they are regulated by SEBI, not a na uh, National Stock Exchange. Under the CRILC, which is Central Repository of Information on Large Creditors, which is set up by RBI to collect, store, and disseminate credit data to lenders. 
What is the aggregate fund-based and non-fund-based exposure of borrowers for which banks have to give information? What is the exposure amount? You have to tell the correct answer. This was the last question of today. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the section, uh, the session. Thank you.